Russian Santa Claus is hardcore. Naughty children don't get cold, they die of exposure. Happy Blizzard Day, New York City. It is currently 14 degrees outside my apartment and it is snowed in. I figured what better way to celebrate than to kick off this review with a book about Russians and winter, because who knows winter better than the Russians. The book is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. There are a lot of ways to describe this book. Unconventional, I think, is the best one. Um, you can have your typical fantasy book. This is not that. This is, this is not going to be Harry Potter. The big thing about this book is that it's a fairy tale told in the modern style. Very different than most things I've seen lately. Best point of comparison I can make is Salman Rushdie. Yeah, if any of you have ever read Harun and the Sea of Stories, I recommend that. So what the book is about. This family of Russian nobility who live in the Russian wilderness. Pyotr Vladimirovich, his wife Marina, and their four children. Marina decides she needs to have another child, but she knows that if she does, she's going to die. Figures it's worth it, has the child, dies in childbirth. This child, Vasilisa Petrovich, otherwise known as Vasya, ends up getting a little bit touched by magic. And that's where the story kicks off. Now, before I go any further, we need to talk a little bit about Russian folklore. Some of, some of my viewers may be familiar with the concept of fairies. Those of you who know a little bit about them will probably know that they come from Celtic and Scottish and Welsh mythology. Thing is, the Russians also have fairies, and their fairies are very similar, actually. And that's where a lot of the inspiration for this book comes from. Russian folklore, Russian fairies. So you've got the fairies that live in the house, You've got the fairies that live in the forest, and then you've got the king of the fairies. And that is Morosko, otherwise known as Father Frost, otherwise known as Russian Santa. When wild young maidens come to meet Father Frost, if they are polite, he gives them all of these riches, and if they're nasty, he leaves them to die. Because Russian Santa, like I said, is hardcore. So that's what's special about Vasya, is Vasya can see and interact with these fairies. And so she knows all of the fairies of the house and they teach her all of these things like how to speak with horses and how to interact with the fairies of the wild and do all of these weird nature things. So Vasilisa grows up very happy, living in the wilderness, doing what young noble girls in the wilderness do. One day when she's about 12 or so, her father decides that he needs to go remarry. So he goes to Moscow to find a wife. And while he's there, he meets a man who gives him something to give to Vasya. And it's obviously magic, and he's very, very frightened of it. Then Pyotr comes back with his new wife, Vasya's stepmother, who can also see the fairies. Unlike Vasya, she thinks they're demons, and she's absolutely terrified of them. So she brings in a priest in order to get rid of all of the demons, which works, meaning that Vasya's village starts losing the protection that the fairies granted against supernatural evil, like the bear. So Vasya has to figure out how to protect her home without help from the fairies, while her father debates whether or not to give her the thing that the man in the Moscow market gave him. I can't actually tell you where Russian Santa comes in because that's a bit of a spoiler, but there are a lot of things to be said about this book. There's a lot of things it did right. There's a lot of things that it did very well. The writing is excellent. If you've ever read like an old style German fairy tale, like the Grimm's version, this reads a lot like that, but with a lot more modern description and sensibilities to it, and you really get a sense of the characters. That's one of the other things that this book does really well, is the characters are amazing. Even all of the little side characters, Vasya's brothers, the little fairy who lives in the oven, they're all extraordinarily well-developed, beautifully described. One of the better things about this book is the way it treats the villains. In a lot of fantasy books, you're going to have a Dark Lord, you're going to have a Voldemort, you're going to have a Dark and Rawl. A Darth Vader or what have you. This book doesn't necessarily have that. It takes this it takes the evil stepmother trope and sort of turns it on its head. Vasya's stepmother is not evil. She's just misguided and scared. Same with the priest. And so the villains aren't villainous. They're just scared. And you can you can sympathize with them. You can understand them. You just want to pick them up and shake them and go, What are you doing? You are hurting everyone. And that is that is an accomplishment. It takes a lot to make you not only sympathize with the villain, but sort of agree with them from their perspective. And that's one of the things I love about this book. The setting as well. The setting is amazing. The Bohun does a great job of making it feel comfortable and familiar. Now, one of the problems the book has, I think this book should have been standalone. It's, it's book one of the w Winter Night trilogy, and it shows. 
the last part of the book sort of drops a lot of the things that were in the beginning. A lot of really interesting plot points that never really got anything done with them. And it just, it replaces a lot of that story potential with a sort of last battle that doesn't really work. It's, it's a bit of an anticlimax, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense from the folklore perspective. It is very clearly setting up the next book, which I'm definitely going to read, but um, I don't know, it, it, it hurts this one a bit. Overall, my recommendation, not the best book I've ever read, but you definitely should check it out. It is innovative, it is interesting, and it deserves to be rewarded for being all of the things that fantasy should be and isn't these days. But you should definitely buy it, definitely read it, you will enjoy it, or at least first three quarters, and you will not regret having purchased this book. Uh, this is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Amazon links below. And like and subscribe if you want to watch more of these videos. Go to my Twitter or my Tumblr where I write terrible fanfiction and make jokes about Batman's children. See you next time. Bye!